Hello my friends, welcome to your tarot reading and your what you need to know for the full moon in Scorpio that's coming up on April 23rd, 2024. My name is Natasha, also known as Nourish Natasha. If you're new here, welcome. If you're old here, welcome back. Like I said, this is going to be a tarot reading and energy check-in for the collective for this full moon in Scorpio that's coming up. Uh, it's this is the pink moon that's coming up on April 23rd. Um, you know, I set the intention that this is for the collective, for whoever finds it, so congratulations if you made it here, you're part of the collective. If you like witchcraft and wellness and everything in between, uh, hit that subscribe button. That's what I do here on my channel. I put out full free yoga classes and tarot readings for every new moon and full moon. I put out weekly ast astrological forecast tarot readings and yoga classes for every week. Um, I also put out uh, plus size, accessible, trauma-informed, beginner-friendly yoga classes here with a dash of witchcraft in there as well here on my channel. And I also have a membership. So if you hit that join button, um, we do live yoga, live tarot, live new moon and full moon workshops. I do everything witchcraft and wellness. So if that's your jam, come on down, come join us. We're going to talk about what this full moon in Scorpio is all about and then we're going to get into a tarot reading to see what the energy is and yeah that's pretty much it now this full moon in Scorpio is our first full moon outside of our most recent eclipse season which you know this eclipse season it was pretty quick but also pretty intense you know it was on the Aries Libra axis so it was a lot of um, you know, us, how we show up in relationships, how we show up um, for ourselves. It's kind of like the dynamics of like us um, as ourselves and our self-confidence and our own perso persona and autonomy versus, you know, um, us with other people. You know, that's kind of the Aries is like the self and the Libra is like the uh, relationships with other people. You know, we had a lunar eclipse in Libra. We had that massive solar eclipse that everybody was talking about in Aries with the new moon. And this is our first full moon outside of that little eclipse portal. And don't forget, we are still in Mercury retrograde in Aries and we will be until April 25th. So this full moon in Scorpio is kind of like the last little pit stop on that Mercury retrograde journey. And you know, this Mercury retrograde was in Aries. There's a lot of stuff going on in Aries this season. Um, and this, and all Mer all retrogrades as a whole, like it doesn't matter what planet it is, all retrogrades as a whole are kind of about um, bringing things back from the past and it depends on what planet it's in it depends or excuse me what planet it is what sign it's in depending if that kind of you know, it depends on what we're supposed to be reflecting on from the past and things like that. But a Mercury retrograde is specifically, you know, Mercury is the planet of tech, travel, communication. Um, and then in Aries, you know, this very like fiery, uh, I don't want to say aggressive, but intense fire sign. Um, Mercury retrograde in Aries was, uh, you might have noticed a lot of explosive communications or feeling like you, um, maybe there's a lot of miscommunications, like you say something just in the heat of the moment and then like it didn't come out the way you want to. And then there was like, you know, issues or conflict around that. You, you know, you always hear in Mercury Retrograde, people from the past come back, you know, the tried and true, like don't text your ex during Mercury Retrograde. Um, because Mercury Retrograde is a time of reflection and a time to a reevaluation. Things from the past come back. So you can look at it and be like, do I still want this? Or was letting go of it the right decision? Usually, yes, it was. Um, and partnered with that eclipse season that we just had, it was a really intense transformation. It was a really intense, like shifting away from the old and into the new. And this full moon in Scorpio is like the last step of that transformation. Scorpio is the sign of transformation. Scorpio is, Scorpio is ruled by Pluto, which is a planet of death, rebirth, transformation. Scorpio in the tarot is ruled by the tower and the death card, both cards of massive transformation, death and rebirth. And the tower is like catastrophe that leads to, you know, a complete um, demolishing or erasing the old so you can build on top of it like your tower comes crashing down that's all Scorpio energy um, I wrote a uh, final chance to cut the cord of the lessons that we had to learn in Mercury retrograde and this eclipse season I think that this full moon in Scorpio is going to be like the so like the eclipse season was the actual transformation you might have felt during this past eclipse season so like um march and the bit of april that we've already gone through has just been like really extreme maybe events that have happened that have just like rocked your world rocked your life or even if it was just more of an eternal transformation um either way this full moon in scorpio is like we've come out of that transformation portal right like the the eclipse was almost like the cocoon like you were a little caterpillar and then the eclipse season was like the cocoon where you turned to goo and you actually transformed and this full moon in scorpio is like the butterfly part where you're actually on the other end of it and you're like oh huh that happened a lot of 
that was intense. A lot of stuff happened. I really changed. And I feel like it's like we're finally able to kind of acknowledge the change and the transformation and release emotionally anything that we might be holding on to. Because those major transformations, like when you're going through it, you might not have a chance to feel, right? Like, you know, you're so busy going through the transformation that you are you don't have a chance to like feel what you need to feel. Um, and Scorpio is a water sign. Scorpio is is the deep deep feelings so this you might have things coming up if you want to tap into that energy my yoga class is going to focus on the sacral chakra and the hips and where we store all those emotions and kind of get us to that point of like emotional release but you know that's the full moons are about releasing if we know anything we know full moons are about releasing okay i wrote down i want to break free like the queen song that is what this full moon in scorpio is going to feel like um i wrote emotional purging to ground so we are also just getting into taurus season from that really intense airy season taurus is earth taurus is grounding like it's like the emotional release you need this full moon to be able to like ground and like find stability and like kind of get back to your routine of of grounded stability after that intense eclipse season like this is the time to let it all go um yeah i wrote first full moon post eclipse release uh, i wrote rage room vibes these are all my notes like i take like pages of notes for every full moon and, and new moon just like channeling like the energy um rage room vibes and because people forget i think that like when i say like you know, Scorpio, it's like time to feel your emotions. People think like, okay, crying, sad, which yeah, that's definitely an emotion, but there's so many other emotions. There's anger, there's rage, there's um, frustration, but there's also happiness and joy. Like maybe the really intense transformation you just went through has brought happiness to your life or a celebration. Like this is a time to feel things in their fullness, like feel the full emotion of things, whether it's good, bad, happy, sad, whatever. Um, I wrote transformation and transmutation. Um, transformation, you know, it was like, again, the, the kind of uh, cocoon thing, like a uh, caterpillar pillar to the butterfly. And, and transmutation is similar, but different. Transmutation is um, taking uh, like, sadness and transmuting it channeling it into power you know it's like kind of taking it you're still partially the old but shifting it and rearranging it to make it the new it's very it's kind of similar same same but different kind of energy you know um scorpio in the body rules our reproductive system our hips our genitals our, our sacred areas our sacral chakra um so you know that's like you're gonna probably maybe feel that that's why we do hip opening yoga when i teach my anything in like scorpio classes that's kind of what we focus on um but all in all this is going to be a big release emotionally again whether that means rage room vibes you got to smash something whether that means you got to cry, whether that means you got to celebrate, go be joyful, whatever this recent transformation that you have been through is bringing up, now's the time to feel it. The phrase um, feel to heal is real right now. Like that is literally the full moon in Scorpio vibes is feel to heal. And that's what we should be doing under this full moon in Scorpio. Also working with water, you know, Scorpio is a water sign. I do say that Scorpio is like the fieriest water sign, but you know, um, also transformations in the physical. Like I just got a... <laughs> 24 inch long silver hair extensions after being having like dark hair forever like you might feel the need to go get some physical transformations you know um anything like that like embody don't be afraid of the transformation don't be afraid of the feeling i know it's hard like that's kind of you know people uh always ask me like well you talk about releasing like how do i release how do i release and i'm like well have you have you actually like felt what you have needed to feel from whatever transformation or whatever traumas or intense things that you've been through have you actually like allowed yourself to feel it and most of the time we're like no i've like uh distracted myself or had some kind of coping mechanism so i don't have to feel that it's time to feel and i know it's hard but you can do it i believe in you all right i will stop ranting about this full moon in scorpio and we will get into the tarot and see what the messages are first we have the three of pentacles at the bottom of the deck this is honestly a card of job well done and it's kind of the vibe of like, and this is the after tarot. And I chose this deck because again, I feel like this full moon in Scorpio is the after of the transformation, like the, uh, 
the dust has settled and we're allowed to kind of look at the transformation and be like, okay, what was happening here? And that's kind of what's happening in the Three of Pentacles in this deck, the after tarot. It's like one second after the traditional tarot. And you can see here, he's like looking at his sculpture that he has carved, like, okay, and it's a job well done card. Like I did that. And a lot of the times, and traditionally it has two other people here on this card. And it's like your friends, your family, your support system being like, good job. Maybe everybody's contributing something. Um, you know, it's about, uh, I hear like the Beatles song, like I get by with Little help from my friends like who are you building things with and who has maybe helped you get to this point um so that's definitely something what else do we need to know or what else is the vibes of this full moon in scorpio it's funny like sometimes chaos mode like when when things are a little chaotic like with mercury retrograde and aries i find that chaos mode shuffling doesn't work and then when things are like chill, chaos mode shuffling really, really pops off. All right, what do we, let's do the old fashioned way, I guess. Knight of Cups, absolutely. Honestly, this, before I started this reading and I picked up this deck, the Knight of Cups was just sitting on top. And that's kind of like what I was just saying about feeling to heal. Like the Knight of Cups is the Knight of Water. So Pisces, Cancer, Scorpio, the Knight of Emotion, the Knight of Love. And he's coming in with that cup there. And he's actually drinking it in this card. And he has like fish all over his little tunic. And the Knight of Cups is like in kind of a desert. And he's walking towards like this stream. And I think that's kind of the vibe. And as I'm doing this, I'm like, I gotta take a sip of water. Like if you're watching, hydrate yourself. Um, it's like move towards you know all knights are on a mission and this knight is moving towards water which is the things that make him feel good emotionally it's the things that fill your cup so that's definitely what you should be moving towards <laughs> under this full moon in scorpio and moving away from again releasing what doesn't serve you moving away from the old the old you is gone the old you is gone um you know i don't know if you know that but i'm here to tell you the old you is gone and you're getting in your boat and you're moving on to calmer shores the thing about the Six of Swords is what are you taking with you? Who's going in that boat with you? What what do you need? And it's like, I'm, I'm hearing like, it's just down to like essentials. Like uh, in this big transformation that we've had of, you know, this eclipse season and kind of transforming into maybe a new person completely. It's like, what remains the same, perhaps? What do you bring with you on that journey? Like, fundamentally i'm still the same human being like you know i like the same things i'm a weirdo i like horror i like spooky stuff you know i'm like <laughs> i have my own things and that core part of me my values and stuff stay the same but like you know my life is kind of changing like i'm you might be physically moving like i am i'm moving 2700 miles across the country to salem like but what is staying what is coming with you in this next version of you and what is what are you not bringing with you we have the lovers here. I have to censor a little bit because, you know, they're naked. But we have the lovers here. This is a card of Gemini. And yes, the lovers, we know. We know what most readers will be like, oh, yeah, the lovers, like, soulmate. Uh, which, yeah, that's fine. <laughs> but the lovers is actually a choice. The lovers, the card of Gemini, is a card of duality. Um, it's either this or that. You know, you feel maybe like you have to make a choice. Or you feel like, um, I'm hearing, like, because we all want to kind of transform and we all want to move on from our old life, it's hard making the choices of what we want to take and what we want to leave behind. Very like analysis paralysis. I'm surprised the two of swords isn't here. Four of wands. What you should be focusing on is balance. I'm also hearing that like the one commercial where it's like, why not both? Like they think it's like a taco shell commercial where they're like, why not both? Like you can have both almost like you can have it all like you can um it's like that energy of transmutation right what what i was saying like same same but different there's no need to pick between like one thing or the other or like be stuck between like black or white thinking um there's shades of gray and in the transmuting the old into the new and still carrying um some of the things that just make you you and like um things that make you feel like stable in your life right the four of wands is a card of stability it's like it's a, it's a mixture of both. It's a mixture of, because even though, yes, I feel like we have fully transformed from like the old versions of us, uh, there's still parts of us that remain the same. And you don't need to completely, I think when we talk about transformation and that kind of energy, it's like, it's not like you're waking up tomorrow and you, you're like a completely new person that looks completely different with a new name. And like, it doesn't have to be like that. You could literally wake up tomorrow in the same body, in the same place, 
and you're still the same you, but you feel completely different. Does that make sense? I don't know if that makes sense, but um, it's like instead of feeling like you have to completely choose between like this or that, black or white, um, it doesn't have to be like that. It doesn't have to be, the transformation doesn't have to be as extreme as you think it is, is what I'm hearing. And it's better to focus on um, balance and stability and um, those things that make you kind of feel stable throughout transformations, like routine, right? Like uh, my routine where I get up, I do my journaling, I do my workouts, I do my yoga, that makes me feel stable, even though the other aspects of my life might be kind of shifting. I don't know if that makes sense. I'm kind of rambling. Queen of Wands, absolutely. Go forth and be bold. Be passionate. Take risks. Um, go do the thing that you're scared of doing. Um, go be weird. Don't be afraid to be weird. Be bold. Be you. Move towards your joy. She's holding the sunflower here, pointing towards the sun, which is joy and warmth and happiness and abundance in the tarot. The queen of wands is a queen of fire. She goes and does it. She goes and does it. Whether she's afraid or not, she goes and does it. Lots of fire here. Three of wands. Um, you might be figuring out how to do that. This is right underneath the lovers, you know, lots of cards of transformation and transition here, um, picking kind of one thing or the other. But the three of wands is like, how do I, it's like the three of wands is like, before you get into that boat and sail away, you're like looking over a cliff, like to that body of water that you're trying to cross and be like, well, how do I get across here? What's the path? What's the direction? In this version, he's like sending out a falcon to like go see what's ahead. It's like, uh, maybe a slight delay in the actual physical journey, maybe transformation, the move, the whatever it may be. Um, but you're still, you're planning, right? We're putting the, the plans now in effect that we have kind of shifted into this new version of us. We're like, all right, cool. Now I can plan out what exactly it is I want to do here. All right. What else do we need to know? We're going to clarify what this mystic monday's deck what else do we need to know is that the queen of swords i knew she was going to come out yeah queen of swords uh queen of air gemini libra aquarius she is the queen of she gets the bad rap of being like the ice queen um but she is able and this is again what i was talking about balance it's like you don't have to go super extreme when making a choice you don't have to go like super black or white um, the Queen of Swords, yes, while she does get the bad rep of being like able to take that sword and like cut out anything that does not serve her, her other hand is extended. Usually some um, in other depictions, there's like a butterfly in her hand or on her sword. She has mastered the art of being able to cut out what no longer serves her, but also still receive. Like, because you can go balls to the wall, um, I'm going fully this way, and like, I'm not speaking to anyone, I'm cutting out literally everything, and that's fine. That You were well within your rights to do that. But I would encourage you to not go so extreme, not cut out everyone, everything, um, maybe from your previous life or your previous versions of yourself. Like, you don't have to absolutely just go, like... You know what I mean? Does that make sense? Like, you don't have to just, like, wake up tomorrow and, like, go move to a different country and, like, change your name and grow a beard and shave it off and change your name to Bob Pants Sponge Square. You know what I mean? Like, I always get some SpongeBob references in there. But it's, like, you can cut some things out and cut some people off and cut some energies out and do the cord cutting. This would be a great full moon for cord, cut, cord cutting. But that doesn't mean you're cutting yourself off from, like, everything, from receiving new good things, Right? from the parts of you that make you, you. We don't want to get rid of that. We're just, I'm hearing like trimming the edges. I got a haircut for like the first, I mean, I know I got extensions, so my hair is longer, but my natural hair, I actually got cut, I've trimmed off the dead ends, right? That's kind of what it's feeling. It's feeling like snake, snake, a snake shedding its skin. Uh, I'm a snake, you know, like I have a snake sitting right next to me. It's my, my pet snake, Todd. It's like, um, the, sh the, sh I can't stop saying snake, <laughs> the snake that sheds its skin is still the same snake, but it has gone through a transformation, you know, three of swords. And, and funny enough, we also have the three of swords at the bottom of this deck. Now look at the difference between these two, three of swords. This one has all the swords through the heart and this one, the after tarot, the swords are falling out and this heart is mending. You should really be focusing on again, this like heart healing, this, uh, feeling, feeling, to heal, feel to heal, you know? If you still feel like you have those swords in your heart from whatever it is you went through, that could be causing you to go like fully Ice Queen, cutting everybody and everything out because you're hurt. No, no, this is the pink moon. Um, and yes, it's in Scorpio. So yeah, it's an intense energy, but like, it's also, even though Scorpio, I feel like is a harsh energy, it's also kind of a soft energy of 
being soft with yourself and healing and getting those swords out of your heart. Prince is a sword. So many swords. This is the page of swords. Maybe it's time to go on a new adventure. Maybe it's time to, you know, heal through new, new ventures, new adventures, um, and inviting new things in new ways of thinking, like not getting stuck in this, how I was hurt in the past kind of thing. Um, Go on some new adventures. You know what I mean? Two of Wands. Absolutely. Lots of adventurous, going on new journey type of cards here, walking through portals, going... Uh, I'm hearing I can go the distance from Hercules. I don't know why. Um, you know, take a step through that new portal, that new adventure, that new direction. Take a step forward. I know you're stressing. Nine of Swords. I know we're stressing about it. I know it's scary, but do it anyway. I knew that. Didn't I not say earlier? I was like, I'm surprised the Two of Swords isn't here. Two of Swords. This or that. This way. I can only do it this way or that way. Wrong. False. There are so many different ways that you can do something. The Two of Swords traditionally, and that's what's stressing you out, right? It's the analysis paralysis of like, maybe I, you feel like you've transformed and you're like, where do I go from here? Like, I, I feel like a new person. I just don't know where the heck I'm going because I'm trying to choose between this or that. And the, the key here is you need to find, there's like, have you seen those memes where it's like, I'm not this or that, I'm like a secret third thing. It's like, there's a secret third option that you're just not seeing or you're refusing to see because you feel like there's only like two options. Like the two of swords, she's usually sitting in a chair and, and she has two swords and a blindfold and there's an island behind her. And the whole point of the two of swords is like, she's trying to get to that island, but she's like, no, I can only go this way or I can only go that way. When in reality, there's like a thousand different ways to get to where you're going. Um, release the urge or the need for it to just be very black and white. Think about different options. Think about different ways, different things that you would have never, that maybe you're afraid to do or you couldn't even imagine doing as your old self. Like, the card of Scorpio, the death card. It's time, I don't, I was going to say it's time to die. That's not what I mean. It's time to let the old self die. It's time to re 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 be reborn, to change, to, you know, the death card scares people. And, you know, it's a little scary. It doesn't mean actual physical death. Yeah, sometimes you can. But this is the card. It's of death and rebirth. We forget that little and rebirth part. Death to the old and life to the new. Out with the old and with the new. Like, you don't need to be stuck in that this or that analysis paralysis, black or white. There are so many more options. And I don't know why this is coming up. I mean, it's kind of similar to what we're talking about here. But I was just in my hometown for the first time in a really long time because I'm moving my mom um, back home so I can go on this new journey. I can go move across the country. I've been taking care of my mom forever. So I'm moving her back with our family so I can go and like be free, you know. And I was talking to my uncle who is someone I very much look up to and he started his own business and he's, um, you know, very uh been very successful but before that he was scared you know my like he brought himself up from nothing and um it, when he took the risk to start his business he told me that he was like I thought what was what's the worst that can happen and I know we want to doom spiral and be like oh my god terrible things that's why we're stuck in like the analysis paralysis right that's why we're like stuck in this like stressing out what's the worst that can happen doom spiraling like uh but a lot of the times the worst thing that could happen when you're like debating on starting this new journey, like let's say I want to move to Salem, right? I'm moving to Salem. And let's say I get to Salem and something goes wrong and like I fail and I have to, you know, start over again. That's the worst. Yeah, that would suck. I would, and, and I would just take myself back home and like probably live with my family. That would be terrible and I would be very sad, but I can pull myself out of that. I could, I could, I could get through that. You know what I mean? Like... It's like, just do it. Just take the risk. Because guess what? What's the best that could happen? What if everything turned out even better than you expected it to? I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Nine of Pentacles at the bottom of the deck. What if you were abundant? Uh, Queen of Wands right behind that, which we've already had here. What if the risk did pay off? What if going and doing the thing that you're passionate, creative about, and going and being bold and putting yourself out there did pay off? Have you ever thought of that? Have you ever thought of that? Um, you know, it's hard. It's hard because we get stuck in the analysis process because we're so scared of like, what if the worst happened? But it's like, bring yourself back down to earth. Like the worst that could happen, you can get through that. Take it from someone who's been through the absolute worst that has 
a person can go through. I've been through divorce. I've been through the loss of a parent. I've been through major traumas and, and life things and, and health things and all kinds of stuff. And I'm still here. I figured it out. You know, we can get through it, my friends. I'm going to pull a couple more cards from this nifty little deck um, from Threads of Fate, which I love. It's kind of like a Magic 8 Ball deck. Like it kind of answers yes or no questions, but it does have little uh, nuggets of just wisdom, just little things that we might need to hear. What do we need to hear? Or if perhaps somebody here has a question that they need answered in the collective. What do we need to hear for this full moon in Scorpio? It says unveil your truth at the bottom. Unveil your truth. Shuffle and pull again. Don't mind if I do. <laughs> loosen your grip absolutely what have i been saying like we're so fixated on this black or white thinking this this or that this like analysis paralysis just loosen back off <laughs> back off a little bit it's on its way to you so why are you stressing it's already on the way it's already on the way like you're gonna get to where you you're wanting to go no matter what so just release feel to heal baby let's get one more your magic is potent, absolutely. I think you're more powerful than you think you are. You're stronger than you think you are. And yeah, unveil your truth if you need to. That's what it says at the bottom of the deck. Very Queen of Swords type of energy. But it's already on its way to you, my friends. Loosen your grip. Focus on the emotional healing under this full moon in Scorpio. Like the like, go feel what you need to feel. Take your mind off of the choice that you need to make or the stress of getting to where you want to be. And go just feel some stuff, okay? That's all I have to say for this reading. I hope you enjoyed. Again, I'll have a yoga class as well if you want to tap into the energies of this full moon in Scorpio more physically. Um, I'll have a workshop here in my membership if you want to join us for live new moon and full moon workshops, live yoga, live tarot, just hit that join button. I have witchcraft wellness courses. I do personal readings. Everything will be linked in the description box below. I hope you have a wonderful full moon, my friends, and I'll see you next time.